Hey, Scott Spears here along with the legendary 2024 WWE Hall of Famer, Thunderbolt Patterson. And we are going to come at you with some great programming here. Talk about a lot of stuff from the past, present, future, whatever's going on, whatever has happened. Thunderbolt and I are going to discuss it on these programs and we hope you are going to enjoy these as the weeks go on. But we're right off the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame was just last weekend and this beautiful plaque was given to Thunderbolt at the Hall of Fame. Thunderbolt, with what'd you make of this? Truly a dream come true. A dream come true. Debbie Debbie never dreamed that it would be possible or that I would accept it. But the power, the power of the living God yeah. brought it all together. Touched hearts, spiritual renewed minds. If it had not been, oh, come on, brother, whatever it comes back. Right? Talk well, let's talk. Let's talk about this because we we touched on this <clears> at one point about the idea that at one point you th you said you might not ever accept it. Yeah. Now, why was that up a, a, to a point that you? Well, you know, everybody got the opinion, right? Right. Well, there's two points. I said I never would step in a ring again because the best years of my life was taken away. I mean, I, I didn't do, I don't think I done anything wrong. Uh, or I didn't do no more wrong. Everybody else that went with the other two organizations that started against the NWA went back to work. So, uh, Hey, and I mean, I only thing I can lay on it hmm. is that race car, you know, and, and you know, it, and, and I thank God for 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 for, 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 for uh, the, the, the WWE. Gerald Briscoe and Bruce. I thank God for them. Because if it had not been for the Lord and however they touched their heart, I mean, all the rest, well, you can, you can, you know, you can pick up yourself and see what they, I didn't do this, or I done that, or he, stuff ain't that. But not only, not only, not only did they wreck my life, but they wrecked a lot of the fans. Man, everywhere I walk, everywhere I, I get so many calls of just good people from all over the world. Now it's amazing, it is truly amazing how so many people can be together in different organizations and all, but there are individuals in there that can try to tear it down or try to divide and conquer, try to just lie and hate. Why? You know, Thunderbolt, I want to come back to this because it was mentioned so much at the Hall of Fame and it's been mentioned so much as part of your biography that you were blacklisted. Now, tell the exact story of how that happened with Ann Gunkel. Well, um, how it, you know, I mean, how, I don't know how the blacklisting worked. That's on their end. Um, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Ernie Ladd called me, and uh, uh, asked me to come and work for Ann Gunkel. Now, you, you know, you know, and all you fans out there know that Bill Watts made Ernie a booker, a so-called booker, or so-called office individual, you know, they blah, 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 you know, <laughs> well, we ain't want, let's, 
I want to try to stay as positive as I can today. I don't mean because WWE has renewed my spirit. When I went and worked for Ann Gunkel, there were three organizations. Eddie Ironhorn had one, and Gunkel had one, and the NWA had one. All worked at Channel 17 Superstation. And uh, we all worked. Every town that the NWA had, we also sold out all of those towns. Ox Baker worked with Ray Gunk on a Thursday night, and that Friday morning, those chauvinistic pigs, excuse, ooh, excuse me, I'm trying my best, I'm trying my best, but this, this is what not only affected me and my kids and my family, but it's a lot of people out there like a little bit of what I do, are done. So, and Gunkel offered me uh, something, and she even went back on that word, you know. And I started running myself. But all of those guys, or uh, most all of them, had went back to work. So That's you went. All that happened. You went to work for Ann Gunkel, and remind people why this was such a bad thing in people's mind to work for Ann Gunkel. Well, I mean, that, 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 that was against the NWA. Against the NWA. Against the NWA, uh, uh, a uh, Tom Renesto was supposed to have been Ray Gunkel's best friend. But my understanding, he sold Ann out, you know, and then, well, you, well, see, it all goes back to Billy Boy, Billy Watts, you know what I mean, uh, how he felt and or, or prostrated, you know, where, I mean, you know, I, I, I knew that I should have been a champion or had the qualifications, but, you know, uh, uh, during that time, uh, the... Uh, Jody Hamilton, Bill Watts, you know, they say I'm, it's just like that boy with that curl up thing. I say I'm polluted. Dutch Mantel. Dutch, yeah, 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 yeah. And see, his story wasn't even right. Because I never worked for a, a Reagan uncle. So his story, there's a lot of them just get bits and pieces and they'll form their own mind and their own, own thinking for whatever, hey. Hypocrites! Oh, excuse me. Come on. Now, of all the did I did I did I? Uh, uh, I think you cleared some things okay, up. Okay, okay. Now, for all those other people who did work for Ann Gunkel, they all were welcomed back at some point, but you were not. Everybody know that, right? So, do you think do you think that I walked away from a job? I mean, they weren't paying me right, but do you think I walked away from a good living? People, for some reason, think that. Well, it is, it's not true. I ain't no fool. I mean, all those years, man, nobody but the Lord kept me. I didn't have no job. I, I didn't get a chance to go. They, they, they have... See, I get on that negative part, and I don't want to do that, you know? I, I just don't want... I, I, Well, history is important, though. To, to I'm focusing on WWE. And that's the future. I'm focusing on WWE. <clears throat> I That's first right stuff in a long time. That Bruce and that Jerry's from Pooh. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. And it's all going to be in the book and the movie. That's a long story there, too. Yeah, long. You see what you And it's coming. Hey, yeah. don't you know it is? Now, when we talk about wrestling in those days, when we talk about the Ann Gunkel, Ray Gunkel era, what was it? Let's go back to the beginning. How did you get into wrestling? Because a lot of people are confused on that. 
I started Waterloo Hour. I mean, I, I, I Waterloo Hour. I walked into the Hippodrome every time they came into town with my bag in my hand, challenging anybody and everybody in there. And Gus Kerris and Bob Geiger. Bob Geiger was from Iowa. I don't know about, uh, oh. I mean, they just took, okay, okay. Gus Kerris sent one of the greatest African Americans to see me. Well, it sent me to see him at the Ellis Hotel. Uh, that was uh, Luther Lindsay. Luther Lindsay hey, was uh, just a spitting image, image. Well, not he, Luther, because he was older than Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin was just a spit and had more talent than Luther Lindsay did. You understand? <clears throat> so, who was your first match against? Uh, well, the first met Bob Brown. Bob Brown. That was on the Waterloo TV, yeah. And, and I, pe people can still see that, yeah, I believe, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Black I, wish and white. I, I wish I had known that it was good. They won't be funky like they would, because I would have whooped. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> so excuse me. so to, that match that people can see, if you go to YouTube and search Thunderbolt Patterson, you will see a black and white match between you and Brown. Bob Brown. Bob, 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 Bob Bulldog. Bulldog Bob Brown. Bulldog Bob. Now, Tell people who might be watching that match right now what, what you wish you had known and what would have happened if you had known what was going on in that match. That'd been nasty. <laughs> I wouldn't have been here today. I wouldn't have been here today. What was going on? Well, I mean, I mean it, it, it just, it's entertainment. Okay, it's entertainment. And I was uh, a little green and I was trying to get in. I was trying to get into that money. You know, and... Uh, it, if I, ooh, if I had known it, I'd whooped him pretty good. I, I would have whooped him. They would have put. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, well, what, what, what kind of guy was the bulldog? Every time he talked, he spit. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, mean, I didn't know that much about him. He, but he was, he was a jobber. You know what I mean? Like. Went home, his dad died, and came back, and him and Bob Geiger was the hottest tag team up through the north there, man. Kansas City and Missouri and all that. So at what point did you end up in the Sheik's territory? In the Sheik's territory? Well, that was <laughs> after I left. I left me and Dick, Dick and Murdoch. Oh. And myself, yeah. Okay. We drove him, my family, and his family. You met my baby the other night. Yes, I did. Dick Murdoch and his wife, and we we caravan together from Amarillo up to Detroit. That was in '68, I believe it was. Now this area that is an important name: Sheik, Bobo Brazil, Ox Baker, yourself. Uh, Pampiro, Furpo, those were the big oh, names yeah, of that yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. Let's run through some of those guys. Let's let's start with uh, Pampiro, Furpo. Who, well, no, 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 let's take a little deeper in that. Let's go deep. See, because, I mean, we, that was 68. See, I started in 1965. Well, I started in 64 because I was going up to uh, Minnesota uh, and uh, Haston, Nebraska, working for Vern. Working with oh, you worked for Vern. Oh, I I I, I, I broke in. Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne. I mean, Vern Gagne. Uh, 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 man, let me let, 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 let me get back around coming up. When I left Waterloo and come to Kansas City, Missouri. And I couldn't stay in Kansas City because it was just a little bit too. So I went on to Kansas, went on to Kansas City, Missouri, and that's where I got a place. That's where the office was. But we worked in Kansas City, Kansas, and uh, um, I 
I had first run in was with Pat O'Connor. Uh, now you know that, and like like I said, I started up there in Minnesota. Worked for Holly. Worked with uh, Vern. With all of the top guys that Vern had, the Red Bats, all of them, and done everything that they wanted to do, you know. And and when I come down here, when I came after, when I left North Carolina to go to work for Ann Gunkel. Harley made the statement that he spit in my face or done something, and because I went in the ring to challenge all of them, in one of at the Kansas City, excuse me, the Atlanta. That's when all of the wars was in on seventeen, and I took my little old chair and went in there and stuck in there. And Harley said he done this or that. He didn't come out or whatever. But man, when I first started, I, uh, 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 he sent me to Houston, Texas. Bob Geiger did, and uh, um, Morse, the office was in Houston. Morse Siegel was the promoter, and Mar he died. He died. That's when I went home for Christmas. I asked to go home for Christmas, and. He told me, I asked him when he could come back, and he told me I didn't have to come back. That was Paul Bosch. That's when I caught the ride with the Ernie going to L.A., Los Angeles. Uh, Dick Byers got me booked in L.A. The Destroyer. This, the Destroyer. This is 1967 when I went to L.A. And I stayed there in L.A., uh, uh, the Mongo, uh, Buddy Austin. When I first understood of taking care of myself. See, when I, when I, I, I didn't tell you about when I left down there, I, I, that's when I quit and walked out there because I had got hit and I lost my equilibrium. And I went to the doctor every day when I went back to work. Uh, they told me I was out chasing it my dream, you know, which I was. And, uh, uh so when I got there to L.A., I wrestling is a business. You give yourself to an individual, and uh, after being slapped side of the head with one of those horses come off as a chain, Johnny Factor, we're talking about in the foundry, da, da, da. and B Buddy Austin. He didn't, I didn't, not turnbuckle. He ran my head into the rail. I mean, the, the turn, the, the rail. I mean, the, the pole. The post. And I lost, lost my equilibrium. And that's when I understood right there. Stop letting them do what they want to do. They didn't care. You know? That's when I, God give me, I had some skills already. You know, so, okay. And uh, Alberto Torres and I, we were the West Coast champions. Uh, and uh, all, all of the greats was out through there. Bearcat Wright, B uh, Bobo Brazil, uh, uh, El Mongo. I mean, just uh, from there, Crazy Luke Graham. You ever heard that name? I've heard his name. Uh, th these are individuals. And... I wanted to grow. I started understanding that individuals was traveling over the country, you know, and I wanted to, my I, my skills had got pretty good by then, you know, I draw, drawing money. And I went to San Francisco, and uh, uh, that's where I ran into, I, I never did meet Peter, my via. But I ran into uh, Gorilla Monsoon, Fritz Von Erich, uh, uh, Pat Patterson, and Ray Stevens. Ray Stevens was one of the best tag teams in the world. You understand? Ole and Jane was good. Pat was da da da. But yeah, I ran into, I mean, Tanaka. I'm talking about individual, worldwide individual. You know that was. Uh, 
really, I got to, uh, the ex to work with everybody, everybody. I mean, this, and that was in uh, like 67. See, I never stayed in a place in a long time. At that point. Then I went on, uh, when I got ready to leave there, uh, 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 Roy Shire is the only one told me, say, hey man, if you, what's the matter? Well, they, you know, cause if you wasn't making enough money, tell me. And that's the only time. But I made, yeah, let's we'll see. Yeah, I hadn't been back to Adam Murray yet. Wait a minute, it's okay. So I went on up to Vancouver. Now, I went to Vancouver. I didn't get along too well with that promoter up there because it was da da da. I, sh I didn't live in Canada. I lived in Blaine, the port of entry. On on the American side, right on the beach, right there, it was, it was good. and uh, um, our Sonny Myers had booked. Sposer had me booked in in uh, L.A. When I got back to Kansas City, it was canceled. Well, then I understood all of the things that had happened. You know, from the Harley race from Minnesota. Uh, and I mean, and the Pat O'Connor couldn't do nothing. You understand? And then there was Jody Hamilton. All, all of that Missouri uh, followed me. You, you, are you with me? I'm Whatever. With you. you know, and for some reason, I've never been to St. Louis. Which people consider the well, wrestling capital. Well, St. Louis was the headquarters yep. of the NWA. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of that was when I finished up there with Ann Gunkel, I ran a show in the Omni against them. And Sheik, I had, you, you can pull it up. It was IWA, IWA, IWL. That was my organization. And Sheik came to work for me. Sheik and his wife Joyce was on the board. They put them off of the board, and that's when I got back blackball. So it was because it was a combination of working for Ann Gunkel, who was outside of the NWA, mm -hmm. and then running your own show outside of the NWA, mm -hmm. led to the NWA not booking you. Mm -hmm. Now, did at that point anybody from the because the Ganya organization was still running pretty strong then. The, the what? Ganya, the AWA, uh -huh. he was still running strong, uh -huh. and you had been there early mm -hmm. in your career. Mm -hmm. Fritz von Erich was still running pretty strong there down in in uh, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, of course McMahon Senior was running strong up in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have offers from them? No, 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 no. no. Ain't nobody never called me. Never. Nobody called me, but only. That's how I get, you know, they also said on one of those, they also said on, that Dusty Rose was the one that got me back in good, and that's a lie. That was a no, that was a lie. You know, we've never delved deep into this, and it's important at this Hall of Fame time because... Uh, right now, the WWE World Champion is Cody Rhodes, Dusty's son. In that video package, you saw it last night for the first time, his son, Cody Rhodes, says that Dusty, when he was alive, said he took stuff from you. Um, you were around in Dusty's era. What? And they have said that Dusty hired you back. We just found that that's not true. Not true. Okay. No, sure. So, so what was your relationship with Dusty? You won the title from him down in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What was he like? But even even there, even there, if one of, when those places talk about it, they say Frank Goodish. They won't say Dusty. You understand? I mean, I had no relationship with Dusty. No friendship or anything. I, I mean, hey, Dusty was a book, and Dusty... <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I mean, I mean how, how could I? So really, there was no... I had a dream. Yeah. Then they stopped my dream. Hey. Bill Watts.
the Celtics. Clearly understand it. Yeah, well, uh, he won't he say it. That's yeah. what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, that's probably been a friend of mine to a certain extent. Bill? Supposed to be. Well, I, I, oh, yeah, he was running too. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't go to work for them until after I couldn't go nowhere. Uh, uh, um, Robert Fuller. Me and Robert, me and Robert Fuller watched. One, I went to Robert Fuller's house. Me and Robert Fuller watched everything that Elvis was doing, all the movies, the whole talk movie, whatever. And we talked about the whole thing. And that's when I started. I didn't go to Tennessee, Nick Gooders, bad, bad paymaster. And I never did, I, I wouldn't go to Florida because Eddie was a paymaster. Eddie Graham. Eddie Graham. But Fritz von Eric asked me to go to Florida. Now, Eddie had a brilliant mind. And I mean, well, I went there, Sam Mus Sam uh, uh, Steamboat, Buddy, all of them individuals, wrestling individuals, were partners of mine. We, I mean, who man. So yeah, <clears throat> when you were in Florida, and it was in that video package, mm -hmm. you defeated Dusty for the title in mm -hmm. Florida. What would you remember from that match? What do you remember from that situation? What I remember from yeah. What was it like to wrestle Dusty Rhodes? Yeah, wrestle anybody else. I mean, I mean, I had to wrestle a whole, a lot of people. A lot of people were involved. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, you know, Dusty was Dusty. I mean, that's the one only one that had a dream, you know, and I mean. Who was your favorite opponent? Opponent? Yeah. I mean, I worked with the greatest of all of them, Luthez. Uh, Luthez. Gene Kaniski, and I, I, I mean, all of them. I worked with I, uh, all of them. Uh, uh, King Curtis. I, I worked Pat O'Connor. I, 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 well, I never, Pat O'Connor never would work with me no more. For, no, work with me because I had something to deal with him. For. But I worked with all the rest of the individuals. I mean, Tarleton Naka, Gene Kaniski, Luthez, uh, and and, and uh, 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 Jose Lothario, Johnny Valentine. I work with Vern Gunn. I work with all of them, man. Now, Johnny Valentine, that's oh, the name you hear. Yes, now, they yes, say one the this man. One of the greatest, man. Was one, hard one, hitter? Pardon? Hard hitter. When he hit you, that's they say you I mean, that, hey, that, that's what it's all about. It's all about. I mean, doing what you what you do. The way you see. Oh, I, mean, I see. He's turning me off on some <laughs> old. I don't want to talk about all the mess up. But Valentine was uh, stiffer than his better than. So you agree with the Valentine philosophy? The stiffer oh, yeah, the better. Yeah, stiffer the yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Because they say he and Wahoo, they say. Oh, had those Wahoo McDaniel. Yeah, McDaniel. Wahoo. Yeah. No, he he stiff. Yeah. Huh? Was he a stiff wrestler? Stiff Wahoo, wrestler? Wahoo, solid. No, solid. Yeah, solid. Yeah, solid. solid. Yeah. And he was a, a legend, certainly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now we got one minute left in this segment, but how good was Wahoo? How good was one? Yeah, yeah, we talked about was one of the better, better in the video. Better. And how good was Johnny Valentine? It was one of the best. So these are one and Luthez. Oh, hey, that was the cream of the crop. Those were the group. That was, I mean, that was. I mean, I'm talking about even when he got up to an age, man. That 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 Carl Gotch, Luthez, Vern Gagne. Luther Lindsay, Brock Nessie, Sheldon Benjamin, them bad some guns. <clears throat> we're the only one that I really ask me. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and find out how Thunderbolt got to Ohio here in Michigan with the Sheik. And we're back here with the legendary Thunderbolt Patterson, or I should say, Hall of Famer, that Thunderbolt is. Patterson. That is. Right up here in the corner. That is. Right up here. Yeah. Now, it's well, let me, let me say something about that a little bit. Go right ahead. I mean, that was that was the first. That, we talked about it back in '67 in 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 in, in Amarillo, and that go way back. You know, there's a lot of them 
Well, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's good. One thing I want to ask you before before we get to the Sheik and that group, the crown. You're in a crown in a lot of these. How long did you wear the crown and why did you wear the crown? Well, I, I won them. I won them crown. I won the brass nooks. I was a brass nook champion. And uh, uh, the, uh, the area and the folks that I dealt with, I was, you know, a journal. Just like men, men bring, just like, just like a who, who, you know, you, you know, you know the baddest man? Who's the baddest man? You know the baddest man in the wrestling? Who is it? Do you know? Well, I know who they say. <laughs> Haku. Who? Oh, he's the baddest one. And we saw him the other night. And Bob Aaron. And Bob Aaron, Bob too. Bear. You know, and them two. And see, that's one of the problems. It's so many of them individuals out there that's bullies and want to be bad. They ain't bad. And then when you don't let them do what they want to do, they, you're a troublemaker. Let me read this here in the book, just so, because I, I don't think we've been through this, and then we're going to get to, we're, we're getting to the Sheik, so stay with it. We're going to get to the Sheik, because I know people love the Sheik in this area. Known for his deadly punches and unmatched charisma, Thunderbolt Patterson is a pioneer notorious for stirring up audiences into a frenzy. A mainstay of the Southern Territories during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Patterson's 30-year career is filled with championships, legendary rivalries, and fighting against racial inequality. Inspired by the legendary Bearcat Wright and Lou Thez, Thunderbolt Patterson began his in-ring career in 1964, bursting onto the scene as a cocky, no-nonsense brawler. Bolt quickly made a name for himself as a grappler fans love to hate, making people hang on his every word during his unique and colorful interviews. Patterson inspired an entire generation of WWE Hall of Famers, including future tag team partner, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, Black Jack Mulligan, and Jimmy Valiant. Thunderbolt Patterson was an outlaw who lived by two rules, throw hands and win gold. He did just that, capturing titles in promotions such as Big Time Wrestling, Continental Wrestling Association, and Georgia Championship Wrestling. Whether he was on his own or involved in tag team competition, Patterson broke his opponents down while putting on an unforgettable show for the fans. After an incredible career lasting three decades, Thunderbolt Patterson had his final televised match at Slamboree 93 before fully retiring in 94. After hanging up his boots, Patterson spent his time helping children as a minister while lending his knowledge to up-and-coming wrestlers in Atlanta. With his influential contributions through several eras of professional wrestling and his commitment to the industry, Thunderbolt Patterson is a worthy addition to the 2024 WWE Hall of Fame class. Yeah, you know, and, and, and see, clear, full, and just understanding. Jerry Briscoe and Bruce Pritchard understand the truth. So, oh, you understand what I'm saying to you? Right, so WWE. Yeah. So let's run through these names. We talked about Dusty. You tagged with Dusty. Oh, uh, uh, just a time or two. Time or two. See? Oh, I had to bring all that up right now. Black Jack Mulligan. A good friend of mine. Good friend. Yeah. Good guy? Yeah. Good yeah, guy? Yeah. And Jimmy Valiant, who's still around. <laughs> well... Enough said there. There you go. Uh, let's, uh, now I do want to get to this, and we're, we're getting to the Sheik, I promise. Now, your last televised match was at Slamboree 93 for WCW. You uh, tagged with uh, Brad Armstrong against... No, 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 no. I was for Bob Armstrong. Supposed to be Brom. Bob. His dad. Yeah. He, Bob didn't show up. Bob didn't show up. So Brad took his place. Yes, sir. And then you went against uh, Rashke, Baron Von Rashke, and Ivan Koloff. You, you, you can punch. You can punch that. Uh, you know, you were my, 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 man, my, my, my business partner now. Donnie, he was with me on that. He I brought all my boys down to there. I had a group on. Oh, Athletic see. supporting kids. That Ole and I, we started and did only that uh, long story. But... You can punch that up and see the action of that match. Uh, I'm not not I'm not talking about the match. I'm talking about that was interview. 
and oh, there was a, a Gordon Soley was doing it. No, was Gordon John doing that? Go Gordon was talking about it. Yeah, Go Gordon was. Well, we were sitting down to the table. Yep, Go it was Gordon. It was in the Omni Hotel. Yeah. Okay, but 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 but, but what I'm saying is, we were sitting at the table, and Von Rosky and uh, 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 Ivan came up, and I was sitting there with Teddy Long, Bobby Walker. Kid, I took in, but Bobby didn't say a word. But uh, uh, as you saw in the background, Ron Simmons was going back across the face, and then straight across there was James E. Barnett, my boy. The white hair. But man. then, Teddy Long said, I'm speaking and I'm sitting here talking with. The Godmother, Mother, Godmother. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you know, and that's one of the and and you can find he's one of the individuals that tells a lie about only saying the N word to me or in front of me, and that's a lie. But he always bring that up. Can you say not yeah, true? Yeah, well, I mean, hey, that's it, baby. I can't imagine it would have happened. Well, but the question I have, so that was your last televised match, but you fully retired in 94. Who was your last match again, and, and where was it? Do you remember where it ha was, or what happened? I had, man, it's so many, you know, because I had, I don't know. I really can't even, I can't mention that. Because I, well, during that time, that might have been, that might have been when I wouldn't work for the Poffos. Because I, I went, Ronnie Garvin, another real good friend of mine, in, in uh, Kentucky, I think it was, Lexington, Kentucky. The Poffos had an area, you know, and Bob Root, uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage wasn't, wasn't the Macho Man then, but Lenny, uh, uh, Weingroff, Cowboy Bob Ellis, they had a group that ran against every. What do you, hey, you know, I mean, uh, they called it Outlaw. The well, I mean, outlaw. but did, but, but that Macho Man come on out and get him a job, didn't he? You know, it's interesting. There is a match online with you and Randy yeah, Savage, and and that's probably when I went and worked for them up there. Now, what was he like to work with? Randy was. Athlete, good guy, good athlete, and a good, good, a good worker. So now it brings us to the Sheik. Now, how did you end there in big time? End up in big time wrestling, and what was the Sheik like? As I told you, Murdoch. You know, that's another one. They say how they talk about Murdoch. Murdoch was one of my best friends, also. Never, I, I ran across a lot of things and a lot of individuals that was haters, but to me, Murdoch was a, 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 one of the best, okay? But we left, and, and Funk didn't want, want us to go, but we, I wanted to move up where, uh, so I went on up to the, trying to get closer to New York. <laughs> but I went on up and worked for Sheik. And, uh, I mean, we had great, great met Danny Hodge. Do you remember when Danny Hodge started fighting? Oh, yeah. Well, we had boxing matches also. You and Danny Hodge. Oh, yeah. And, and, and Cobo, huh? Yeah, and Cobo Hall. Cobo, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had matches, wrestling matches. And he was, a, hey, you know what? That Danny was something else. And they say he was tough. Man. Oh. Now, and man. also I hear people wrestling bears. Oh. But, you know, that, 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 that shows you. The presence of the living God. You, you know, they, no human being can't beat no bear. That was the, now Fritz booked me with that. You wrestled you know, the what, bear. What, 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 it wasn't Fritz. I, mean, I can't who was the booker then. Was it in Texas? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's when the office was in Dallas. So you had, uh, it was before Fritz? No, Fritz was a, was a promoter then. Promoter. Yeah. But it was one of the other ones. 
Huh? It was one of the other groups there in Texas? No, 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 no. Fritz had bookers, you know? Oh, one of the bookers booked you. I got you. Oh, 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 oh. I'm trying to... I smoked a little cigar all the time. But anyway, anyway, anyway. I'm trying to break it all the way down to the haters and all. But anyway, anyway. I rest, yeah. I rest a bear. And God ran that, ran, ran that bear off. I mean, I don't know what. I ain't done nothing. But... I, I ain't done nothing, but the bear took off. So you know. So how how, how long in the in this confrontation did the bear take off? Well, we was out there for a minute, you know. What do you do with a bear? Not too much. I can imagine. So <laughs> ain't nothing you can do. You know what I mean? And, you know, I I, I Dude, and and I didn't understand, and I was a top star. At that time, you know, you and you don't put the stars with, with the bear. bears yeah. and stuff like that. That's, that's um, different, uh, side different, different. And stuff. Yeah. So you're with the sheik. Now the yeah. sheik is notorious for a lot of I rough. Had, I had so many matches with sheik till it's unreal, man. Now a lot of Real people good. say that the sheik would take liberties with people. Did he take liberties with people? I, uh, he didn't take them with me. I mean, we had great matches. I mean, he, the old man, uh, that Mac man, she took me there. I went to Los Angeles. I mean, they said that I never been. Why I'm in mean, Hall of Fame and whatever. I never been there, whatever. Well, she took me to the Madison Square Garden. Hmm. I wrestled there one time, and I had to fight that night. Big Jess Ortega. Oh. I mean, you know, they you know they're in the garden. They didn't want to, you know, do what they do what they wanted them to do. So I had to do what I had to do, you know. So get, <laughs> to do get, what they think. All I'm trying to do is follow orders. So and rules. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so we got the Sheik there, but also in big time wrestling, we've got Pampiro Furpo. Oh man. Oh, oh. He was one from. I see. I had known him from the Vern Gagne day when I first started, and I mean, what a. Huh. Now you talking about. That red bastine. Whew. Now, probably one of the biggest names out of that particular area, big time, certainly here in the Ohio area, Bobo Brazil. I work with him too. Now talk about Bobo, because Bobo's he 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 resonates with a lot of people. Well, I mean, but I had Bobo was a gentleman, classic, classic. I worked with him. We had great matches. But we didn't have a lot of matches. Now Bobo looked like an athlete. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think? Because you obviously resonated with the fans. Why do you think Bobo resonated so well with fans? Same way. I mean, that's the you know the individual. Everybody can't do it. Everybody can't. You know, they 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 can push whoever they want if it ain't. That's reading the stuff go up and down. You know? Bobo even had a song at one, Co Coco Butt, the old Coco oh, Butt. Oh, yeah, well, Bobo was a, one of the originators. Yeah. And he had some great matches with oh, the Sheik man. up there in Detroit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they went around for well, about 100 years. Bobo, Bobo lived in Bent Harbor, you know, and right in Michigan there, and the Sheik was up there all the time. Now, and, and we're speaking very well of Bobo. He was a friend of yours, as yeah, you say. Yeah. But just to straighten this out, because I think this is an interesting history, and that's what we're doing. We're just talking. Now, why does Bobo get the reputation of being good guy, easy to work with, and you get the reputation of being hard to work with and different? Hey, well, I mean, it's, you know, everybody got the, got the ways and... Well, man, let's listen. And see, it would go back to that same, it always go back to that same old thing. Suppressors, suppressies, all the way back to the race thing, all the way back who's controlled and how you act. 
So if you act right and do what they want you to do. I think we've talked about this before, and, and just to bring it up on the last note on Bobo, before we move along to one of my favorite people out of big time wrestling, Bobo had an interesting way um, of handling his pay. Hey, baby. Hand, baby. A hand. But if you can, if you can make a hand every night. So a hand meant? What is it? $500. $500. If you can make a hand every night and work 365 days a year, and work for 20 or 30 years, and don't, hey. He could do it. So now, for you, that would not have been. What? Would you have had that philosophy? Oh, that no, 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 right, no, right. no, 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 I, I, hey, hey. I don't ask for nothing, but I won't, if I work, I won't work mine. And I won't the same as you do others. So, so we know what Bobo was asking for in those days. Well, let me say it like this here. Okay. Bill Watts paid me one thousand dollars. Superdome sold out. Superdome, thousands. Come on, man. And you told me that that was your highest payday. I paid myself the highest on, on a, one of my shows. Right. But the highest yeah. you got from any promoter was yeah. Bill yeah. Watts' Superdome one thousand dollars. And it took me three or four weeks to get that. Really? Yeah. So. In those days, when you're wrestling in big time, and Bobo's got his hand, he's got his 500, I would imagine, what kind of salary are you making with this sheik? Oh, I was making seven, eight hundred dollars. So you're doing okay? I was, I was, what I was doing, all, I was doing all right. Well, I want to let people I know. I was doing all right. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I wasn't getting what I was supposed to get. But I was doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, then, and, and let's make the point here that uh, if you go back, go in the newspapers, you can search the Marion Star in Marion, Ohio, back in those days, late 60s, early 70s. You were the featured, when they would come to the Marion Coliseum, 5,000 seats, sold out about once a month, you were one of the featured performers in the ads. I should like have one in papers. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to have this, uh, a story, I don't know, to put we'll in We'll find mind. one. We'll find one. Yeah, okay. We'll find one, because yeah, they were there. Yeah, they were yeah. absolutely there. Yeah, what? Well, well, see, see, everywhere I went, God was there and was there before me. They sold out. Doing all them that, and, and, and I never got a chance to go back. Which brings us to the point, you had this great run up there with the Sheik and Bobo's there and Furpo's there and a lot of great Ox Baker is there. So how did that come to an end with, with the Sheik? And you, later on you worked with him. In well, the, Sheik come work for me. Right. So how did you leave big time wrestling? Because you were a big star there. I went to Australia and I... I, I I went, I was getting ready to farm. Getting ready to raise some cattle. Uh, I, I, see, I was in. I was in. I was in. Uh, 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 boy, Fort Worth, Texas. That was my. You met my baby. I, did. I mean, the baby, baby. That was my baby born, Fort Worth, Texas, and that's where I was raising. That's cowboy. Yeah, I'm a cowboy. I raised horses. Alabama. Now, one of my old cowboy, we used to raise uh, uh, thoroughbreds, you know, Tennessee Walkers and stuff. And he called me today. I hadn't heard from him in years, you know. Called me this morning. They called him from all over the world, man. So basically, you left the Sheik's organization to go back south. Not only did I wrestle for Sheik's organization, but I spent a lot of time in Sheik's home, man. In that swimming pool and hanging out, and Sheik was real. So we could say that Sheik was a man, one of the promoters in the real days, who didn't deal. He, he was he was he was a kind of bad paymaster. All all of them really were little bad bad paymasters, but Sheik was down to earth. Down to earth. Yeah, he came to work for me, and knowing that he was going to have some. And they put his head, <laughs> put they him put him out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, one more name I forgot who used to be big out of that area was Chief White Owl. 
I, I didn't. I didn't. You I, work I, with I, him? I didn't ever deal with him. There, yeah. He he was a big name out of yeah, there. At yeah, one I heard point. that. Yeah, yeah, a big but time. I, I never. Hmm. Now, from that point, I want to talk about this, and and this gets into race, but it's an important thing. It's been talked about. The Ku Klux Klan is is operational at this point. Everybody out there know that. So, <laughs> it did. But you, you you have had some run-ins with them. Oh. So tell tell well, what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, when they run in. I mean, I, they, they're in Texas. I, I wasn't allowed to dress in the same place at one time. Uh, I found KK cards in my bag. Now that's in the dressing room, you know. But and then I mean, there's Amarillo. Oh. I'm not Amarillo, but uh, Abilene. Abilene. You know, I mean. They try to hook me up for murder, man, you know, and, you know, it's, you know, and, <laughs> and, and even, even to the point of today, you know, there's individuals that try to block my phone, try to cut it down, and I mean, just, you know, that race card, people, please, y'all need to lay it down. Y'all need to lay it. That, 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 you talking about that race card is the only thing that I know of that we just been whooped, excuse me, damn near to death. You know, it ran, it runs if they damn. <laughs> that race card, y'all, this is America. This is the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. And it, you know it, it's overdue, man. It's time for people to come together, peace and joy. God has given us the grace and mercy, and all the answers give Him the glory, and treat people the way you want to be treated. Why? I mean, what, what are we holding on to? Well, and that brings up an interesting point: is if if you had it to do over again, looking now where we are, you're in the Hall of Fame, good point in your life, would you do anything differently? No, why could have? Right. I, I ain't followed nobody. I followed too many women in my life. <laughs> I ain't followed nobody. You understand what I'm saying? You, but God. You know what I want to do? I want to go back to the very beginning, but even before the wrestling career, because people I don't think I've ever heard this. Mother and father. Where were you born and where were your mother and father in the picture? I was born in Waterloo, Iowa. And, uh, and my father, I'm a Patterson in namesake. My father was a Gleeden. My namesake father was a sick man. I didn't know him there. I, I only had one picture. They say he died when I was about three years old. Mm. But my mama, I guess she had a boyfriend, y'all. And my dad, Floyd Gleeden, told me he was my dad. And he, I mean, and he left me and my children and my stuff. He, so in life, and that's that's basically my story. What they call I'm one of them. They call them bastard childs. So your parents weren't married. No, no, no. no. So you're 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 you're. But I'm I'm, I'm 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 my namesake is what my all my my brothers and sisters had. Patterson. Yeah, but I'm I'm really Glee. a Gleeton. Yeah, okay, yeah, so your yeah. your dad's last name, Blood that Father, was Gleeton. Gleeton, yeah. Floyd Gleeton was Floyd his Gleeton. name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know he died when you were three. No, 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 he no, didn't no, die no. no. He was he, he, he Mr. Patterson. Let me tell you something. Oh, ooh, I bet not. Mm -hmm. He he died in, in two thousand Oh. Two thousand and three. Four. My sister, my oldest sister, that raised me just late in the streets. Now, I come from the streets. Called me and told me that Pop wanted need to be wouldn't go on dialysis. So I uh, I went home for Christmas, two thousand and four, uh, and I got there that. Uh, 
on the 23rd, I think it was. And he was supposed to have been in the hospital then. But I took him that next day. And they kept him. At that time, he was too weak to go on that dial, see, you know? And that, I never but, thought my dad was going to die, man. No. I remodeled his time. So it was a tough time for you? Well, I mean, I never thought he was going to die. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remodeled his house and sat there with him. And you know, after he got to make sure that whatever he wanted or whatever he, you know, to have all his wishes. 2004, he must have lived a pretty long he life. Died, he died in 2005. Five. Yeah, he would would have been ninety three years old. Ninety, so you're gonna be here a while. Pardon me. You got a good bloodline. You're gonna be hey, here a while. Hey, don't you know? I mean, I ain't going home till God called me. There we go. Till I finish. This is my purpose. So this so, is my purpose, and I ain't going nowhere till God say is over. Now, was your father like you? Were you like your father? I guess I should say. Well, uh, well, my 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 dad, my dad. I mean, all of my kids, I had three girls. He left us all yeah. money, you know, all, I mean, he took care, I mean. Now, just so we can get this right. So, Floyd Gleaton is your biological father, but mm -hmm. you were named for the man your mother was with. Well, man, see, yeah, he was a sick man. His name was Patterson. Patterson, what was his name? Isidore. Isidore My oldest brother name was Isidore. Isidore Patterson. Yeah. And and why was he a sick man? What was wrong with I don't, him? I don't know. And he died when you were three? Uh, yeah. So you really don't remember him no, very well? No, no, no. Now, let's talk about your mother. What kind of woman was she? What was what, her name? My mother... Well, I was raised up like in a juke joint. I mean, what they call... My, my mother and my, my favorite aunt was Aunt Kate and my oldest sister, they would whoop the average man. You know what I mean? They didn't take no stuff. Tough. You know? Yeah. And my sister taught me whatever they asked for, give it to them. But don't bother nobody. Treat people the way you want me to treat you. So what was your mother's name? Minnie. Minnie Patterson. Patterson. Minnie Patterson. How, how long did she live? But she never did see my oldest daughter. My oldest daughter was born, uh, I think she was about 65, and I mean, my, you know. She died a little young. Yeah, if that's, yeah. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. did you, would you have a good relationship with your mother? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I ain't never wanted for nothing. Millie Between her and my sister. Minnie and my older, Minnie, Minnie, Jesse, and Isidore, the, my, my oldest brother. I ain't never wanted for nothing. Well, this is fascinating. Now, we this is going to bring it to the end of this week's episode, but we're coming back next week with our friend, the legendary Hall of Famer Thunderbolt Patterson, and we're going to talk about a gentleman who we spent a lot of time with this past weekend, Jerry Briscoe. Jerry Briscoe and Thunderbolt were the first integrated tag team, is my understanding. Well, in yeah. North Carolina. In North Carolina. In North Carolina. And yeah. we're going to talk about that and James Brown, legendary performer. And uh, a whole lot of other things on our next episode. So don't you dare go anywhere.